Welcome back to Search It Up with Sienna, the web series where I use IMDb to discover and talk about all different types of movies and TV shows and how the people in front of and behind the camera not only make it all possible, but are somehow all interconnected. I talk directly with the talent about their backstories and experiences on and off set and what they're up to today. On my last episode, I talked about the show Gilmore Girls. Penny Ortega directed a few episodes of Gilmore Girls, and he directed High School Musical. So today, I'm going to be talking about High School Musical, and I am so, so, so excited to have my guest today, the writer and creator of the High School Musical franchise, Peter Bersacchini. I love, 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 love the High School Musical franchise, and there are three movies in the High School Musical franchise. I talked with Peter Barsacchini about how the concept came to be and how the franchise has grown. In addition to High School Musical, Peter has also written the 2021 animation movie Vivo, Sharpay's Fabulous Adventure, Summer Camp, Drop Zone, and more. And now, without further ado, here is my interview with Peter Barsacchini. So I understand that your path is actually kind of like you started writing um articles about bands and how did you get the idea to start doing that was there any band or performer you covered that made the biggest impression on you yeah i mean i i always liked music the first concert i ever went to in my life was the beatles oh, and, yeah. and yeah. it was their their last concert it was in 1966 a little before your time in san francisco at Candlestick Park and I went to see the Beatles and you couldn't hear anything. It was 50,000 screaming girls, you know, but the energy was so incredible. What I felt there, you know, it was like being, you've been to live shows, you've been in live shows and there's a certain energy yeah. that comes from that, that I was so, I said, wow, I, I want to see what makes this work. And yeah. so I started going to shows and writing about them. And it was different than, it's like, I was working for newspapers and stuff. Nobody asked how old I was. I didn't have to fill out a lot of paperwork. It's not like uh, today, you know, it's very different. And so I just started uh, doing it. And, and there were bands, old bands in San Francisco where that people you wouldn't know, but that I met and found very interesting, you know, and it sort of, put me on a, that started my writing career. I mean, I've been writing almost every day since I was 15 years old. Uh -huh. And that was in 1967. So that's a lot of writing since then and now. Yeah, and I, like you said, with like concert and like how there's a lot of energy. I yeah. recently went to, it wasn't my first concert, but um, it was one of my favorites. And it was uh, one of my first though. And it was Coldplay concert. And it's, oh, wow. Yeah, just like the in MetLife Stadium and just like the energy was just, it was just, it was. You've so got pretty sophisticated taste, sister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I love their songs. Their songs. I love Coldplay. Yeah, Coast. and they put on a good show. Yeah, uh, and I love the Beatles too. That's like one, probably, if not my favorite, if not my dad's favorite, one of my, one of his favorite bands too. Yeah, I mean, it, when we were kids, that, that was like, uh, uh, a rocket ship that took off you know they were so big it's 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 hard to even explain how big they were back then because it was before the internet before you know it wasn't like you'd hear about them you'd hear some music but you weren't seeing things on your computer so when they actually came to america in 1964 it was like a it shook up the world. And after college, I know you were hired by Mar Merv Griffin Productions. Yeah. And I read that you were the youngest talk show producer ever to receive an Emmy Award for working on this show. Um, what did your job involve and how did it change while you were with Mar Merv Griffin's company? Griffin? Well, it was a very, um, really a fun job because I started there as a talent coordinator, which is a fancy word for doing what you're doing right now. And that is I would do interview the guests for the show before they came, you yeah. know, and prepare the interview for Merv Griffin so that when he'd go on 
television, he was well prepared. And um, I sort of moved up the food chain. And as a producer, you decided who was going to be on the show, what blend of people. It's like if you were doing a talk show, you'd sit around and go, well, what three people would be interesting together, you know, and maybe have those cross connections you were talking about earlier happening live right in front of you. Yeah. And so that's what a talk show uh, was then, you know, it's evolved a little differently now, but it was a fun job because I got to meet everyone. I got to meet a lot of people that were my heroes. I got to meet some people that were my heroes that I was disappointed by, some people that I didn't know that I was very impressed with. So it was like, it was like going to college and getting paid for it. It was really fun because we, we didn't just book celebrities, we booked authors and scientists and doctors who were working on cancer cures and all. And so you really saw this huge um, cross section of the world. And then we took the show and we did it from all over the world. I went to Paris, I went to Rio de Janeiro, I went to Israel, I went to Italy, I went, you know, London. And so as a young person in their 20s, getting paid to do all that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that's amazing. A lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure because you're judged every day, uh, you know, in entertainment, you're judged by ratings, ticket sales, movie sales, da -da -da, you know. But so there was a certain amount of pressure, but I was too young and dumb to care about the pressure. I just kept going. Yeah, definitely. And um, now we'll transition to High School Musical. Um, do the, yeah. I mean, the movies continue to be so popular. I love it. My friends love it. It's like their favorite movies. Um, yeah. And I heard that the idea for these came about when you were hired to write a TV musical. Did you know it would turn into what it has become today? You know, it really didn't because um, you never know, you know, because things you think are going to be the, the hit of the century sometimes disappear and things you go, oh, I'm going to do this little Disney movie so my two daughters can have something to watch. Um, and then that <laughs> takes off. But, you know, and it's interesting, Sienna, because pay attention to absolutely everything that happens in your life because you'll draw on it. You never know when you're going to use it. You know, you could be at school tomorrow and somebody says something or does something that gets your attention and you go, hmm, that's interesting. And then 10 years from now, you'll be acting or producing or directing or writing and you'll recall that and it'll spark a whole. And that's what happened to me was High School Musical because it was actually based on something true that happened to me in high school. Yeah. And but then 30 years later, I was writing about it. That's actually funny that you mentioned um, like the like paying attention, like to like what happens in your life, because um, in my English class right now, we're getting ready to write a short story. And my teacher is having us get we, we got memo pads and he's having us like write down like stuff, like interesting things we see yeah. like, every day in it. So I'm going to tell you a secret to writing for free. And that is the, the best writing when there's something that if you're writing a short story and it's not working well or it is working well, it usually comes down to is there enough conflict? Yeah. In the story? You know, if a character walks in the room and says, good morning, if the other character just says, yeah, good morning, you don't have a story. But yeah. if character walks in the room and says good morning and the other character says why is it such a good morning yeah. you know, now you're off and running yeah so uh, make sure you have enough conflict in your story and that'll energize it yes thank you for the tip <laughs> <laughs> and I know like you said one of the main um ca ca characters is themed after your daughter Gabriella yeah. your daughter give you any ideas for any of the characters or scenes Oh, you know, and I definitely observe things because both my daughters, of a daughter and a stepdaughter, and when they were of an age where if I was helping cook dinner and doing they were watching Disney Channel and I was absorbing things, yeah. you know, and I, I 
I'll give you one example. I heard the girls talking one time. There's a scene in High School Musical where Gabriella meets Taylor and they start talking for the first yeah. time and they start talking about their nail beds or something. And, and I heard a couple of the girls, my daughter and one of her friends in the other room as I'm, you know, cooking some ribs or something. And they're, they start talking about, um, oh yeah, my, you have such nice nail beds. And, I, and I'm going, what the hell's a nail bed? And, uh, and so you just pick up stuff that when you pop it in a story, it then has the ring of truth, you yeah. know? And um, it's very, it's very interesting. When we were shooting um, this third high school musical and uh, we were shooting it up, uh, part of it in Salt Lake City. And so I was up there for like a couple of months, you know? And so I'd be calling Gabriella, the real Gabriella at home, hey, you doing your homework? Just cause I'm not there, make sure you're doing your homework, you know, this and that. And the way I figured out to get her to do her homework is I'd get Zach Efron to call her. <laughs> and we'd be sitting on the set and I'd hand the phone to Zach. Say, Zach, tell Gabby to do her homework. And, you know, I'm on the phone going, do your homework? Yeah, yeah, dad, I'll take care of it. Don't worry. But then I hand it to Zach. Zach Efron gets, Gabriella, what are you working on? Nothing. You know? <laughs> are, you, are you doing your homework? Yeah. Math. What are you working on in math? Oh, algebra. Yeah, I had a hard time with algebra. And then they start talking. I go, that's how you get your kid to do homework. <laughs> yeah, I definitely would. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I definitely, there's a lot of stuff in those movies. You know, movies are heightened reality. You know, yeah. it's like, uh, it's sort of, you try and do life without all the boring parts. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you, you don't need to, watch a scene of somebody making their bed, you know, yeah. but you, you do the, uh, you observe everything and writers and actors are great observers of stuff, so. And I know you've done High School Musical 1, 2, and 3, and a series, and I heard High School Musical 4 is coming out. Um, were you thinking ahead to the sequels when you wrote the first? Well, when, when we wrote the first, not really, because we didn't know, uh, we had no idea it was going to be successful as it was. When that movie came out in 2006, it was just the beginning of texting and just the beginning of when kids had their own cell phones. Because yeah. cell phones were expensive and, you know, not every kid was walking around with a cell phone until parents could figure out, oh, I know how to find my kid now. I can hand him a cell phone and track yeah. him down. And on the first weekend, it was on television. Uh, the two big cell phone carriers, AT&T and Verizon, Verizon, called Disney and said, what is going on on your network? And they're like, what are you talking about? Our texting numbers have exploded. We don't know what's happening. We're all of a sudden having <laughs> hundreds of thousands of texts being sent at the same time and we don't understand it and it was kids texting each other saying turn on disney channel zach's cute and da, 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 you know and so that was our first hint that we might have a hit yeah. and then that week at the time when it started on disney channel they played it like three times in a row three days in a row and the numbers got bigger every night yeah. Which never happens. And so within a week, I had gotten calls from Disney saying, you better start thinking about a sequel. <laughs> and, um, and it's funny, I asked John Lasseter, who is the guy who created Toy Story. Uh -huh. And I said, John, Mr. Lasseter, you know, how do you do a sequel? How do you come up with ideas for a sequel? And he told me that he got the idea for Toy Story 2 when he was trying, couldn't come up with any ideas and he was going crazy because Toy Story was such a big hit. Yeah. And one day his kids were in his office and he had in his office all the merchandise, you know, the all the dolls and the lunch boxes and the, the yeah. characters and his kids were like taking some of the characters in the boxes and playing with them. And he goes, no, 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 don't take them out of the boxes. If you take them out of the boxes, right? And he said, oh my gosh, what am I doing? 
of telling my kids not to play with toys. And, and he's, that's what gave him the idea for Toy Story 2. Yeah. And, and so when you started for a sequel for High School Musical 2, I thought, well, we can't just go do it all, all over again at East yeah. High. What's the best day of the year when I was that age? Best day of the year was the last day of school. <laughs> and so, so let's start it on the last day of school and do it for a summer. And, you know, Sharpay and her brother at a country club. And as a kid, I used to be a caddy carrying golf clubs at a country club. So you just sift back into your life and make yourself, the, the Kenny Ortega and myself and the producer, we're all like big kids. You know, we're grown ups and we pay our bills on time and we make sure our kids went to bed on time and ate healthy, but we're also just big kids. You know, we weren't cynical because I know better than saying, I think I know what kids want. Yeah. You, know, you never do. So, yeah. but I said, I know what I would wanted to watch when I was that age. So you just worked on, you know, you, you do that. That's where your ideas. And sometimes doing what your English teacher told you to do of just take some random notes and notebooks and stuff. Sometimes you don't know what you're thinking until you write it. Yeah. So that's fun. Yeah, definitely. And do you have a favorite high school musical movie? Huh. That's like saying, do you have a favorite child? <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, I, you know, I have a big affection for the first movie because it was so serendipitous. You know, mm -hmm. it was just like a little magical thing that happened. And um, so it just came out of, nowhere you know then the second two movies there was a lot more pressure because now you've got a hit and now all the people that were at the studio at the Walt Disney Company are and this is a huge hit you've got to deliver on high school too you got to deliver high school too. you got to deliver you got to deliver you got to deliver which is a little more pressure than just sitting up in your office in your gym shorts and t-shirt coming up with uh the cafeteria scene in high school musical one you know so um i i guess for that reason i have a deep affection for high school one because without that the others don't exist yeah i agree and do you have a process you follow when writing movies or is it different for each and every project well here is um having been a professional writer for a long long time um I don't, I get up and just go to work every day, whether I feel like it or not. You know, it's like if your mom says to you, I want you to make your bed every morning before you go to school, you know, well, some mornings you probably don't feel like it, but you got to do it, you know. And what I've learned about writing is you never know when your best stuff is coming. So your my process is put your butt in the chair and go to work. I also <laughs> use a stand-up desk, but um, you're more likely, you know, on that one morning when you'd rather, gosh, it's a snow day. I want to be out with my friends throwing snowball, and you got to do your homework or whatever. You never know when your best work is coming. So consistency of performance. It's just like if you're going to get in shape to run a race. Yeah. You, know, you can't say, well. I'll, I'll, I'll race on the day of the race because that's when I'll really be excited. You better be training for it. And, and that's what writing is, just showing up and doing it. Yeah, I agree, definitely. And um, can you tell us anything about High School Musical 4? Well, there, Disney's got some ideas about, you know, using uh, a sort of mythical High School 4 as part of the series, the TV series next year. I'll tell you what High School Musical 4 originally was going to be. Oh, okay. There was a lot of business things. It was going to be East High versus West High. And there was a West High, it would be another city that has a big rivalry with East High. And the two schools were going to get into a big... Uh, confrontation in a fun way you know yeah. how that will play out 
um, in high school for with the series is really up to the series people and yeah. all that. And I just am in the background for any of that, but because um, I'm doing some other movies right now. So it's, uh, it'll be interesting, interesting to see. I know I was uh, looking it up the other day and I saw a trailer for it or like a teaser trailer. Sort of somebody concert. sort of invented I don't know. that's I think somebody invented that because it wasn't a Disney you know oh, okay yeah um, so it's you know it's hilarious is the stuff that's out there that people have created their own version <laughs> they're a friend of mine that I, I did a animated a family animated movie with called Vivo mm -hmm. and I did it with Lin-Manuel Miranda who's the guy that did Hamilton on Broadway and he uh he did a thing, he was a big high school musical fan way before he did Hamilton. And to promote um, the show he was doing then in the Heights, which is another Broadway show, he made a spoof of high school musical and shot it in Central Park. <laughs> and it is very funny, you can find it on YouTube if you Google High School Musical, Win manuel Miranda, you'll find that spoof he did on YouTube and it's pretty funny. Okay, yeah, that sounds funny. And speaking of Vivo, I also recently saw Vivo and I absolutely loved it. Um, and I know you came up with the story for the movie. It was an idea you had for a while? Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting because I've been in Cuba. I've gone to Cuba a couple of times because I was researching another movie and I always, the idea for Vivo came, I was sitting around with some DreamWorks executives and uh, we're kicking back and forth other ideas. You know, I said, boy, you know, you don't, what you don't see anymore are those organ grinders where they had the monkey in the old days and they'd have a monkey dancing and people would throw money in a cup. And I said, you know, that's something that's gone away with, contemporary values and that, the way we treat animals and things. And I said, gosh, we, what would happen to these, those monkeys if their old, old um, partner, trainer passed away? What yeah. happens to the monkeys? And it, so it started with that idea and it got set in Cuba because Lin-Manuel Miranda and I, when we met, we started talking about uh, Latin music, Cuban music, and we found we both shared a great interest in Cuban music. And I knew a lot about Cuba having been there. Yeah. And so that's really where it started. And animated movies, they made that movie, assembled it really during COVID. Um, and they had supercomputers at animators houses and they put in special fiber optic cables to ship stuff. And it was a very complicated process, but it was fun. It was fun to do. And again, it was fun to do a, you know, um, we didn't have some high purpose. We wanted to do something that would be fun for kids to yeah. watch, you know, because of other movies that I was working on at the same time are not real for kids movies, you know, and it's fun to be able to do both. How did you collaborate with the other writers and Lin-Manuel Miranda? Well, it's like with Lin-Manuel, it's very interesting because he was in New York and it, I was in Los Angeles. And so we'd get on the phone and we'd talk about, I said, we need a song that's really got to be about this and about then here's some ideas. And there's a big alligator in the movie called Ludador and all that. I yeah. said, you need a, a real evil guy where everything is mine, mine, mine. And he's going, mine, mine, I got that. And he starts working on it. And he'd go downstairs at where he lived at the time. And he had a friend. He said, oh, let me get my friend to help me sing. And we'll do a little. And he'd use GarageBand on his Apple computer and make little work tapes. And um, it's very interesting to hear this stuff in its raw, raw form, when yeah. it's Lynn Manuel at a, a little electric piano in his apartment, um, working it out. You know, it it when people 
see movies and they see the finished product and there's this big glamorous powerful thing is much different than when you see stuff when it starts you know and even with writing there's stuff that i've worked on or when we were working on high school um three i remember sitting kenny and ortega and i would be sitting in a room working on a scene reading the parts to each other yeah said, oh, that stinks let's change that cut this do that because sometimes when you write something it sounds good in your head and then you actually hear it out loud and you go how did i write that and you go and you go and fix it but this you know professional writing professional composing professional acting all of that is just doing it over and over and over and over till you get it right. And there's a lot of people, like in the amateur world, it's fun to do it the first time, but mm -hmm. it's not necessarily, it's not as fun for them to write the 10th draft of a short yeah. story to get it right. The first draft is fun. You know, yeah. it's all magical and uh, starlight and Tinkerbell's over their head with a wand, you know, but then when you have to, get the 10th draft and and that's usually though what separates amateurs from professionals and um for my last questions it's sure. um, i do something with um some of my guests called rapid fire so okay. I'll, just, I'll give you about like a, a few questions and you have to say like the first answer that comes to your head but that makes sense with the question okay are you ready for this i'm very ready are you okay. ready i'm ready okay so here we go. What is your favorite band of all time? The Beatles. What do you stack on when you write? Um, popcorn. Um, your favorite sports team. It could be any type of sport. Golden State Warriors. If you could have dinner tonight with anyone in the world, um, alive or um, dead, who would you do it with? Leonardo da Vinci. Woo. Um, from what you have learned about storytelling and writing, what do you hope that the next generation of writers and artists will carry on? What I hope is that first, they'll have as much fun doing it as I do. Second, I hope you or someone like you will create something that someone will call them up and say, I want to talk about your movie because I really liked it. You know, you really hope to pass the baton. Yeah. And you hope, I, I always tell young writers, young, I want you to put me out of work. <laughs> I want you to be that good. Okay. Well, that's it. That's all. Like those are my rapid fire questions. Well, you're very, you're very, very good, Sienna. You're very prepared and you're very articulate. And I'm going to be interested to follow your career because uh, I think you got a big future. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, it's my pleasure, and maybe we'll talk again someday. Yes, I had so much fun talking to you. Thank you. All so right. Much. Enjoy your evening. Bye. You too. Bye bye. Thank you so much, Peter. It was so inspiring and so fun to hear about your process for writing and creating movies. And now, before we search it up, here's a quick fun fact. Did you know that the falling snow in the New Year's scene of High School Musical was actually potato flakes? And now it's time to search it up. Let's see. Oh, David Lawrence was the composer on High School Musical. And he was also the composer on Descendants. Well, see you next time to talk about Descendants.